Hey guys, what's up? Jed here. Welcome to another video. I hope you're all having a great day. In today's video, we're going to be estimating gradients and areas. We're also going to be interpreting them. So let's take a look at the first example. Here we have a graph of y equals x squared. And we're being asked to estimate the gradient at x equals 1. So how should we proceed? Well, the first step is to draw a tangent at x is equal to 1. So if I go to my graph, x axis at 1, and then here, I should draw a tangent here. Now a tangent is a straight line that touches the graph at one point. So let me grab my ruler and show you what that looks like. You want to bring your ruler up close to the graph like this at x equals 1. So I'm just going to mark that off here so I don't forget. I'm going to bring my ruler very close to it. And in order for your line to be a tangent, it really just has to touch it at this point. You can't go over it or too far below it. So just bring it up really nice and close like this. And begin drawing your tangent. And there you have it. This is the tangent to the graph y equals x squared at x equals 1. So how can we now estimate the gradient using this tangent? Well, we need to find two points on this tangent that have numbers we can work with. So I'm going to choose this point here which has a y value of 2 and an x value of 1.5. So I'm just going to write that down, 1.5 for x and 2 for y. And I'm going to choose this point at the bottom here, which has an x value of 0 0.5 and a y value of 0. I'm now going to use these two points on the tangent to calculate an estimate for the gradient. So we know that the gradient of a line is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And in this case, I'm going to choose this upper value here to be my y2. So it's going to be 2 minus 0. This is going to be y1. So 2 minus 0 over. And now if this was my y2, this has to be my x2. So 1.5 minus 0 0.5, which is my x1. 1.5 minus 0 0.5. And if we simplify, we end up with 2 over 1, which is just a gradient of 2. So we have now estimated the gradient to this graph at x equals 1 using a tangent, and we found it to be 2. And that's how that is done. Okay, let's take a look at this example now. We are asked to estimate the area between the graph and the x-axis, so between the graph and the x-axis, for x is between 0 and 1.5. And that's how you'd read this. x is between 0 and 1.5. So x is between here and 1.5. Use three strips of equal length. So what does it mean to use three strips of equal length? Well, on our graph between 0 and 1.5 for x, we need to draw three vertical lines that are an equal distance apart. So it's going to look like this. We're going to grab our ruler and begin drawing vertical lines between the graph and the x-axis at 0 0.5, 1, and 1 1.5. And as you can see, if you've done this correctly, you should have three strips. And these are the strips, these areas here. Now what we need to do is form shapes with these strips. And how you do that is by grabbing your ruler and connecting the left part of each strip with the top right part of the strip. So it's going to look something like this. Our first strip forms a triangle with a width of 0 0.5 and an estimated height of 0 0.2. And now we'll do the same for the second strip. We'll start from the left hand side of the second strip and work our way up to the top of the right hand side of that same strip. And the shape this forms is now a trapezium. And now finally for our last strip, we'll take our ruler and do the same thing once more. And for the third strip, we have a, another trapezium. Now we can begin with a calculation to estimate the area between the graph and the x-axis. So I guess I'm going to work out the area of this triangle first. Remember what we said, it has a base of 0.5, and a height that we estimated to be 0 0.2. While I'm doing this, I'm just going to go ahead and estimate the height for the rest of my strips. Okay, now let's work out the area of the first strip. Well, it's a triangle, and the area of a triangle is 
the base times the height divided by two. So for the first strip, the base is 0 0.5. The height, we estimated it to be 0 0.2 and we divide this by two. So this will give us an area of 0 0.05 units squared. Now I say units squared because the question hasn't really given us centimeters or meters or any type of unit. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say unit squared because we are working out an area. And that's the area for the first strip. Now let's do the second strip. Since the second strip is a trapezium, we're gonna use the area of a trapezium. So let's take a look at our parallel sides A and B. Parallel side A, which I'm gonna say is the first one, is gonna have a length of 0 0.2. Parallel side B is gonna have a length of 0 0.9. And now we multiply this by the height, which is perpendicular to the parallel side. So it's gonna be from 0 0.5 to one. So that's gonna be a height of 0 0.5. And you have to understand something. These two sides here, have to be the parallel sides. They have to be A and B. You can't have this side and this side being the parallel sides because they're not parallel. So that's just a side note there. So even though I'm calling this base the height, if you were to turn the trapezium around, you would see that this would actually be the height. Okay, so the height is 0 0.5, and I'm just gonna put that on the outside like this. And this is all being divided by two. So this is gonna give us 0 0.275 units squared. Okay, now for the third strip, it's going to be a, another trapezium. So we're gonna use the same formula for the area of a trapezium. And A is going to be 0 0.9. B is going to be 2.2. It's going to have a height here, which is 0 0.5. 1.5 minus one, that's 0 0.5. And we're gonna divide this by two to get 0 0.775 units squared. Now that we have the areas of each individual strip, we can estimate the total area between the graph and the x-axis by adding these areas together. So we're going to have the first strip, which has an estimated area of 0 0.05, add that to the second strip, which has an estimated area of 0 0.275, and finally the third strip, 0 0.775. Five. And this gives us a total of 1.1 units squared. And that's how you would estimate the area between the graph and the x-axis for a given region using a certain number of strips. And just another note to add, if you look closely enough, you'd see that the lines connecting the strips on top here are actually going slightly over the graph of y equals x squared. This means that the area we are estimating is an overestimate. Whereas if these lines were slightly under the graph, as you will see when you practice this topic with other questions, then the estimated area becomes an underestimate. Okay, now we're going to interpret what gradients and areas actually mean in context. So here I have a graph of an object and it's a distance time graph. For a distance time graph, the gradient at any point of this graph will be equal to the speed of the object. The area between the graph and the x-axis for a distance time graph has no significant meaning. Okay, now for a velocity time graph, the gradient at any point will be the acceleration of the object that this graph is referring to. The area between the graph and the x-axis, or in this case, the time axis, will be the distance traveled by this object. So if you calculate the area between 0 0.5 and 1.5, you would get the total distance traveled by this object in that time frame. And on another note about velocity time graphs, if you have an increasing gradient like this in a velocity time graph, that means your acceleration is increasing over time. Anyway, guys, that's it for this lesson. I hope you've learned something about estimating gradients and areas of graphs, as well as how to interpret them. Thank you very much for watching the video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Take care.